With the conclusion of last year's general election and the fact that less women participated in it as contenders, the debate about what roles women are supposed to play in nation building seems to have become a bit more intense. While some Nigerians hold that participation in governance and public administration would give greater empowerment to women and improve society as a whole, there are those that say Nigerian women can have their impact in national development felt in a more profound way through other means. Our next guest, Mary Ikoku, has been a committed advocate for empowerment of Nigerian women. She is also a development and policy analyst. Mary Ikoku joins us now to have a conversation on the roles of women in national development and why it seems that we are not getting our fair share of opportunities to fulfill these roles. Many thanks for joining us this morning on The Morning Show. Thanks for having me. It's good to have you. Good morning. Good morning and happy International Women's Day to all of the ladies in the house. Thank you. And happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Oh, yeah, it's Mother's Day. It is Mother's Day. Happy Presbyterian and Anglican Mother's Day. Thanks for the Happy well, we are talking about women representation in politics. And as we know right now in Nigeria, the number of women in our legislature is one of the lowest it has ever been in our history. And also, our current president, Bola Tinubu, ran on a promise of 35% of women being included in his cabinet. This number has remained less than 20%. Do you believe that the lack of women's representation, both in elected roles, such as our legislator, and selective roles, such as the ministerial position, is hindering the progress of the Nigerian woman? Uh, very good question. Yes, I believe that um, to respond to this question, we also have to look at things from a historical perspective. I think we didn't just, the rain didn't start beating us uh, this moment. It's been a long time in coming. Uh, we have to look at um, the issue of uh, when, at what point did Nigerian women even start voting in this country, to even know when we should be elected and all of that into position. It's rather unfortunate that we're still lagging behind among Committee of Nations uh, in women uh, gender inequality. So if you look at, let's take the history from when women, when even Nigerians started voting. In 1923 was the first time men were able to vote. And this men, uh, you have to have about 100 pounds and above you're deemed to be rich before you can vote in Nigeria. And that uh, went down to Clifford era when Chris Clifford Constitution allowed men, lower the buy bits for men who could have uh, 50 pounds to be able to vote. And that uh, went on till Littleton, I think at some point, men, they lower, they le leveled the ground for men. But at the point to make here is that it was only men who could vote at the time. So when you look at the suffrages, you look at at what point did Nigerian women even, were they allowed to even vote in an election? And that would take us to, I think it was um, in 1954, when only women from the Southeast and Southwest, women from the South were able to vote. And then I think it was 1979 where the Northern, our sisters in the North, could vote in Nigeria. So if you look at this history, then you will understand where we are coming from. And to be able to celebrate uh, the few wins that we've recorded. Are we happy where we are today? No, absolutely. We are very, very unhappy. And we believe that um, um, Nigeria needs to do more. And this period of International Women's Day also brings to mind that there are certain needs that the country needs to address in terms of uh, gender equality, women economic empowerment, and all of those. And inclusion of women in decision making is pivotal to the overall development of the country called Nigeria. So yes, your question, uh, to your question, yes, not having women on decision making table, not having, having uh, women representation uh, retrogresses the development of Nigeria. It also um, makes Nigeria underutilize the talents, the potentials uh, of the other half of the population. 
and it is not good for our development. Uh, so we should really look at addressing some of these issues with the view to encouraging more women's political participation and governance. All right, Mary, thanks for setting the tone for this conversation and, con and congrats again on the International Women's Day. I'd like you to talk more, to speak to the theme uh, for this year, which as you know is invest in, um, uh, in women, accelerate progress. I'm asking this uh, not just because of uh, the fact that the affirmative action as it concerns women in government uh, is still very low, but then in terms of the appreciable progress uh, that uh, we seem to have made in other areas, in corporate sector, in the creative economy, where in the film industry, for example, 60 to 70 percent of the revenue for last year came from women directors. You know, in the media, in sports, in academia, uh, women are doing quite well. Uh, isn't there, you know, uh, um, a need for celebration rather than, um, you know, condemn what we do not have? But are we celebrating enough in terms of the theme that this year I spoke to? <clears throat> This year's, uh, <laughs> I mean, the, the, this year, this, uh, um, the theme is quite apt. But what we need to ask ourselves, investments in women, accelerating their growth. Yeah. Who should be investing in women? It's a very important question that we need to look at the various stakeholders who should be investing, making this investment in women. And they are government. The government needs to make serious investment in Nigeria, in women of this nation. And we do have a president who promised heaven and earth to these women. Uh, president Bola Ahmed Tinubu said women and 35% affirmative action is the least he can do for Nigerian women. So we have a president who have promised and who has said that uh, women will be, uh, he will prioritize uh, women and youth inclusion. Uh, so. Uh, we look to, to forward to, 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 rea to the realization of that. Uh, can we celebrate the quick wins, the, ch the few wins? Of course, we should celebrate. And that's why we're celebrating um, the international women. The Nigerian women are part of the entire globe that are celebrating womanhood. And not just for the 8th of March, but the entire month of March, which is the, uh, the Women's History Month. So we have an array of celebration and conversations and discussions around the issues of women and girls in the whole of March. And so I want to think that, um, that we, not, we need to also look at areas where these investments need to go in. Women of Nigeria do have pressing needs, areas of needs with, that we should be looking at. And one of the things that I think of top of my mind now is that we need a safe nation for Nigerian women and their families. Safety is very, very important to us as women of this country. So as we celebrate, uh, we also look to, uh, we also know that some of our children have been kidnapped so these are some of the conversations, issues that uh, we are having to deal with and the kidnapping and all of that. So we cannot overlook the challenges that we are having uh, even while we are celebrating. Because if we look, overlook those, you can even be in your, on your way to celebration and you can get kidnapped. So we have to also still watch our back. We have to be, we have to have confidence in our government and the leadership to see that women in Nigeria are safe. Our women in Nigeria are operating in a safe environment. We need a safe nation for women and girls and everyone, even men in Nigeria. And uh, another area I think that we need investment in women's uh, economic development, entrepreneurship, building the skills of women, and in the area of education. And then inclusion of women in policy making is something that we must, as a nation, I think we may be becoming an emergency, also looking at the issue of fighting gender-based uh, and sexual and gender-based violence. So, and, and we sh must stop discriminating against women. And uh, I'm happy that Arise Television is one of those television that, uh, stations that have continued to support uh, the growth of women, not just in the women that they put uh, in front of their TVs, but even the women who are directors, leading as CEOs, and all of those in this television. And there have been uncountable times 
uh, because I'm looking at who can invest in in women. Arise Television has constantly invested in the growth of women of Nigeria. They've opened their doors to even the issues that affect women and girls. It's one TV that if we, as women of Nigeria, need to give an award on International Women's Day, this television station, I'm sorry I'm saying this she even don't, she now. Didn't really <laughs> <you>. She didn't really applaud you. She didn't really applaud you for what you're saying. It was unplanned, really, but I just have to say it because it's, it's my truth. Yeah. And I believe it's the truth of so many women in Nigeria. So just to say that we need to look inwards. And I'm talking about celebration, even today we're going to be celebrating a woman king. Um, I came to Lagos for that single reason. If you remember the woman who uh, was the returning officer, um, during the governorship election in 2023, Professor Nena Oti. I mean, Lagos, because we are celebrating her today to mark the International Women's Day. So we are still celebrating because, of course, we knew there was a time that we didn't have women as bank CEOs, so we celebrate those. There was a time we didn't have women heading the talk tech companies, we are celebrating those women. We didn't have women even running for office or co occupying uh, political positions. We have a few, three in the National Assembly uh, and the Senate, and luckily, by some stroke of luck, Natasha Abote joined mm -hmm. the Senate, and we got four. Four women out of how many senators and 14 women in the House of Reps, and a few women in the uh, state houses of assembly. Just to say we've made a few progress, uh, but it's not enough. We want some more. Uh, we want parity, basically, so that Nigeria can develop, not just having women for the sake of having women, but having very quality women who can work and deal with issues in Nigeria, including insecurity. All right, Mary. Well, thank you very much for celebrating Arise News, as you have done. Uh, and, you know, kudos to Nena Oti as well. Uh, uh, we celebrate her as well. Well, you know, you made mention about the fact that you believe that it's this government that should invest in women. Well, the First Lady of Nigeria in her International Women's Day message said, that, said the same thing, that it was time to invest in women more than ever to accelerate our progress. But invest in them not as charity, but, uh, you know, a strategy to build a future for Nigeria. And then she posed the question, and her question was to all women, what are you doing to help other women? How are you investing in her? And I'll pose that question to you as well. What are you doing to help women? And do you believe that women really do support each other, especially in Nigeria? Mm. I wish I can clap to that question. This is a very Im important question because oftentimes people come up with this uh, narrative about women not supporting women. Um, I think that we also need to understand that women are not homogeneous beings. Our characteristics will be different. I don't also believe that men support, every man will support a man because he's a man. You also have men who support women. You have women who support men. So uh, what are we doing in this area? I'm here talking for women inclusion. Our organization, um, Emerge Women, in the last election, 2019 election, we invested over 30 million naira in training women who were running for office. The records are there. We trained women in the six geopolitical zones of Nigeria. We, we don't just train women, we recruit women who we believe have the capacity, competences, and character to deliver the common goods and deliver you know, uh, development for this nation. We find them, we seek them out, and we train them, build their capacity so that they will be able to run for office and win their elections. But like I said earlier, you can understand where we're coming from and understand why we are not having a lot of women in leadership. And uh, one of the F, uh, support, the way to support women is some of the things that civil society is doing and what women like myself and other incredible women in this country are doing. Tundu and, and your colleagues, you're doing so much also for women. I know my way of channels, she's incredible. She's constantly asking, what can we do differently, you know? 
And then we also know that there are a lot of times that media has helped in their own way, but also to say that this is a time to also remind the media that when you have a woman running for office, it's not a time to say mother of five running for office because you don't say father of 10 running for office. So there are certain kind of conversations that we need to have, even in that way we want to support. Let's support women very well. Um, do women support one another? Yes, we do support one another. Enough. But enough. We may not support <laughs> enough. We support. There are people who can go to any length, even to the length of borrowing, just to support the other woman. But that is the character of that person. And I need to say that this issue of lending a hand, uh, supporting somebody, being nice to somebody, is not gender specific. Any gender can support anybody. And a wicked person is a, a wicked person, whether be you a woman. But I believe sincerely that there's a special place in hell for women who don't support their fellow women. Just like there's a beautiful place reserved for women who support their fellow women in heaven. And I have to make this point because there are times you have women who you even support to power. Women rally behind them and get them, they, when they get in there, some of these women also, we must look at their own challenges. Some of them think about the roads, the rough path they, got, they went through to even assume political office. So what you now see them becoming, instead of becoming women leaders who would hold the hand of the other woman, they now become gatekeepers. People who now go and lock you know, the gate uh, against their fellow woman. So that one happens, but I can tell you that they also have reasons and we're not making excuses for such women but for one woman with that kind of character there are a thousand and one other women who are constantly helping the next woman to get to the top and those women are the women we are celebrating at a moment like this so we do we really do but on the scale you may not it may not be on the scale you expect us to because we also have financial difficulties as women so where you have issues where that you want someone to address and a man comes through for you it may just be because the man is better positioned to help financially and not the, the woman not that she didn't want to help so let's not make it um an issue of, but I, I'm happy that the First Lady actually touched on that point. It's a very important point, and I'm glad she touched on it. We need to do more in terms of uh, helping one another. Absolutely. Fantastic. Uh, this has been a very enlightening conversation. I was going to talk, touch on uh, where the government is even getting it right, but we've run out of time. Thank you so much for being on the morning show. We appreciate your time and, of course, your analysis.